Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics and welcome back to another episode of Finish It Fridays right here in the Monster Hobbies Workshop. Well today I have a cool little old kit. This is a Monogram 1970 Pontiac Trans Am and as you can see it is quite an old kit. I bought this originally in 1993 so I've had it for quite a long time. But where did I end up leaving off with this model? Well, uh, let's go down to the bench and see just how far I got. And then let's finish it for this Friday. Powered by a 455 cubic inch V8, the 1970 Firebird was distinguished by its aerodynamic spoilers and bold blue stripes. So today we're gonna be taking a look at my model kit. And this is a skill level 2 1970 Pontiac Trans Am in 124 scale. Good old monogram kit goes together nice and easily. So what actually is in here? Like where did I leave off in building this thing way back in the past? Well, as you can see, it looks like it's almost done. Which is always good. <laughs> Uh, on the instructions it says, I bought this October 23rd, 1993 at Zeller's in Lynn Valley, this is in British Columbia, for $6.97. Now Zeller's is, well, I think it's still kind of around, but not really like it was way back when. Anyway, so here we have this nice white Pontiac with the blue stripes. And I still have some of the black and white stripes on my decal sheet here. And you can see like all these parts are pretty much painted and finished. Now, why did I not just finish it off back then? Well, <laughs> I have a very funny reason. It's not so funny though, because it actually stalled this build for decades. But at my parents' place, they used to have a set of drawers that was for VHS cassettes. My mom used to tape everything on Super Channel back in the 90s. We had that. And um, yeah, so she would tape everything on Super Channel. And then they would put all these videotapes in these uh, dresser drawer kind of things. Special drawers my dad actually built. He did uh, some woodworking as well. And what happened is I had this model kit basically like this with parts out and everything in this box and the box fell over and a bunch of the pieces like the hood actually the hood went behind you know that space between this cabinet thing and the wall and that hood stayed underneath there for about two decades until my parents got rid of the VHS cassettes and we were able to pull that thing out and then I was able to get the hood back. So that's the only reason why this kit is not finished Whoops! right now is because we were, I was trying to get that hood for about two decades and you know it was kind of one of those off and on things like you know it's back there but now do you feel like pulling this, this thing out, like getting all the VHS cassettes out and pulling it? Well, no, not this time. Maybe next time. Like one of those. Anyway, that's my story. Have you lost parts that way? Probably the carpet monster ate them. Anyway, so back in 93, this would have been like right out of high school, I guess. I was building this. And as you can see, I didn't really scrape any seam lines down on this... Uh, <laughs> this here rear axle and I painted the whole thing aluminum I guess I was spray painting at the time this all looks pretty much spray painted trim clad paints but yeah that's where I ended up and uh, here's our interior whoops as you can see the seats are glued in it's got a nice blue light blue on dark blue interior uh, sort of to match the stripes of the hood and everything I've also got the dashboard here. I mean, look at this. I just need to figure out how to uh, paint the gauges on there. But again, really nice work for me back in those days. This is going on 30 something years now, 31 years. And it'll be more when you see this video. <laughs> then I got my uh, radiator and I'm not sure why this is scraped off here. Maybe I had it taped down. 
when I painted it. It does have a few little weak spots in the paint job. There's the grill. Look at that. Pretty nice, eh? Good stuff. The window glass is not painted along the bottom edge or anything. So it's basically right out of the kit. There's the steering wheel with wood grain. <laughs> and the engine painted with actual Pontiac engine metallic blue. Again, very nice stuff. So this, this uh, Finish It Friday video will be finished before the video even starts, almost. <laughs> so it's going to be quite easy just to paint this up. Now one thing that is weird is, I don't know where these exhaust manifolds came from because, uh, where's that engine? See, they're on the, the engine block, so that must be something, I don't know where it's from and I'm going to have to figure it out. But yeah, okay, so let's get building this thing and um, have fun. Here we have the body, and one thing that I really notice is I didn't bare metal foil any of the window frame openings or the door handles or the side marker lamps. And I would need to paint the Pontiac lettering right back here. And I think that was another part of this is that I didn't have bare metal foil at the time. But now with the Molotol paint pen, I could actually just go up and around that frame edge as well as anywhere else on the kit. This is sort of interesting. There's a bit of a step right in the window frame here on both sides. So I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the window glass being rolled up or something, or maybe that's a detail I never really noticed on these cars. Okay, underneath the hood, I have painted it with, I guess, semi-gloss black or satin black. So that is prototypical for a GM. And I will need to paint all these bits under here. There's the master cylinder, just molded on, the battery, the uh, windshield washer, reservoir, and then more of the hoses. So should be quite interesting. Let's see underneath. I also have it painted. Looks like mold mark, but I don't really feel it. Then in the interior, I've painted it dark blue. There is an actual courtesy lamp molded in up here, which is nice. And the glass is two separate planes, so they glue underneath those buttons. And there. So again, I think this will turn out pretty nice for a model that's been sitting around for a long time. The only one thing that has sort of happened with this over time, and I know it doesn't really look like it on film, or maybe it does, but you can see that the white is turned yellow. And now, I don't know if that's because it was in the box or underneath the cabinet thing for the hood. The hood actually seems more yellow than the rest of the car. But I can't really paint this with the, uh, white again because I'll lose this really cool looking blue stripe. And I don't want to paint it black or something like dark color and use the white stripe, because the white stripe is just a bordered stripe. But here you can see this is uh, faded in, like it was airbrushed that way or something, on the real car. So again, um, I think I'm going to have to leave it with this sort of faded white, or sorry, like yellowed white. Not too much I can do. Apparently there is a uh, black light, or not a black light, an ultraviolet light setup thing that I could buy for quite a few bucks and it's meant to it does something to um, white plastic anyway I don't know about painted stuff but what it does is it puts some kind of ionized charge back into it to make it bright white again but it also can sort of deteriorate the plastic I, I was uh, looking up you know, how to get my yellow Millennium Falcon back to white again <laughs> for the Kenner toys. And that's what they have is this ultraviolet blue light thing that apparently uh, makes this turn bright white again. But at the expense of some integrity from the plastic. But anyway, I'm not going to get all that high tech. I'm just going to finish it this Friday. And like I said, it's, it's almost done. 
<laughs> so let's do it. Now as I was sitting at my bench and looking over this model, I noticed a few things and I did remember doing them. One of them is that this entire transmission and bell housing is not actually from the monogram Pontiac. The transmission that came with this kit was an automatic. And that's why I'm having some weird issues trying to line this up in the back, is because the actual transmission from the monogram kit has a pin on the back which goes into this hole right here on this brace. And then that lines up with the drive shaft end, which you can see there, which would go into the hole. Now, I don't have any trouble with this transmission going in the hole. It's just that it's not, you know, going to sit on this bracket. And what I think I could do is just cut out this square with the hole in it, and then file that just to make it pretty, and then paint it flat black to match the chassis here. And that should get it up and around this curve that's in the transmission. Now, I do believe this transmission is actually a Joe Hand piece from their 1970 Oldsmobile kit, because I was trying to build a model of my Oldsmobile, and I needed an automatic. And for some reason, I chose to saw off the Pontiac. Now you can see, interesting thing, there's a little bump for the starter motor. And over here, you've got another bump, but no starter motor. So, uh, I guess this is a universal bell housing for left and right hand side. <laughs> I know there's probably no such thing in the real world. Now another issue that I notice with this kit is if you look at the carburetor from the side profile, you notice that it's sloping forward at quite a crazy angle. And I don't know if that's going to affect the air cleaner for that ram air hood thing. When it gets in there, if it gets in there get in there. Or if I can tilt it back with the carburetor sloping forward. I guess it could sit flat. But it is weird that they didn't just make the manifold come straight up unless that's how it really is. And then the other problem I have is the distributor. If the distributor is in the hole... Now I had to break this out of here because it's like the back of the air cleaner wants to hit the distributor. Well, it did when I had the distributor glued in. So that's an issue I'm going to have to try to get around somehow. And I do believe the starter motor should have been painted black. <laughs> anyway, this is 1993 me. And, I mean, it wasn't bad for the time period. It still holds up well today. But I think I can uh, fix this ju up just a bit and get it all to sit perfectly. So here I've removed the little square peg for the transmission to mount on. And now the engine actually does fit in there. So I was right about that. See, it fits up a lot tighter with the transmission. But I discovered a, no <laughs> a whole new issue. And that is that... That rod coming off of the drive shaft does not actually go into the back of the engine. There is a shortness in the transmission by quite a significant amount. If you actually see where it's mounted, it only just slightly touches the end of the transmission. And turning this over for a better look, and mind you, this is slipping up. Like I'm holding this with my bare hands. So let's see if I can align this a little better. There you see it's it's not there, and yet there's a drive shaft back here. So I guess one way to do this is to actually saw the drive shaft somewhere, maybe here, and extend it out. Well really the length of that pin. Maybe just add a little tiny bit more to get the universal to butt right into the back of the transmission like it should. That's option one. I guess cut it right here. Option number two would be to put a little tube off the back of the transmission so that it meets that universal. So I don't know, maybe... Like, I guess I can't be too exact on this kit. You know, unless I'm going to totally take it all apart and start repainting everything I built in 93. I don't know, do I want to do that? 
Probably not. Maybe I'll just find a little tube of evergreen and put it on there. I think that'll work. That'll match it up all right. Here's our engine with the little extension tube put on the end. And now let's try it in the car. So I just hook the little end onto the back of the, the drive shaft. And there it is. So now it sits nice and flat and it actually connects onto the drive shaft, even though this does look a bit ridiculous. So what I'll do is I'll just add in my colors in here for the, uh, you know, to cover up the white plastic and then glue the engine down. And then we can deal with, I don't know, trying to fix that air cleaner somehow. I almost think that I can leave that distributor off. <laughs> I don't know if anyone would ever see it because this back of the air cleaner just covers everything right up. But we'll see how it goes. Before I install the engine, I took a little bit of time and went around and corrected up some of the paint chips and other errors for this kit or things that I just didn't address. So to start with, I found the old Pontiac blue and I painted up along by the valve covers and by the exhaust manifolds just where there is some white plastic showing. I was able to break off this manifold and then paint the starter motor and glue the manifold back on. And on the other side of the engine, I painted the white oil filter in there. So now it looks a lot better and pretty much ready to go. Also remove the paint from the bottom of the exhaust manifolds and in here where the engine is going to mount. And that is all fresh and clean inside as well. So this engine can be glued in three points. Now it's not going to glue on that crossbar, but that bar is just there to hold the transmission in place. Overall, I think this is getting better and pretty much where I want it to be back in 1993 when I was building this thing in the first place. I was able to glue in the headlights here just by scraping the chrome off the top surfaces of the inner ring and then adding a little bit of liquid cement so that it would roll around there and keep them locked down. Next step is to paint the back of this with flat black so it disappears when we pop it into the back of the car. Here's our dashboard after I painted in the gauges and the little needles and that was quite a bit of a trick. And I sort of discovered that um, one of my paint brushes that is a 20 over 0 is not quite as good at doing this detail as a different brush that I have that's maybe a little bit bigger, like a 5 over 0. That is what I find really odd. But I used that bigger 20 over 0, actually a smaller brush, in to paint the numbers and it was just going blah blah blob. And then I used the other brush for the needle. I guess the numbers were going blah blah blah. But the needle came out sharper with that other paintbrush. So I might just switch my uh, gauges to the other paintbrush. Then I've got the steering wheel right here. And it was interesting because this center cap, it doesn't just drop in center into the hole. It's actually off center and you turn it and eventually it will become centered. So just so you know, if you're building this kit that um, you have to rotate that little thing. The problem is <laughs> I was doing it with metal tweezers and the metal tweezers actually pulled you know, kind of closed on top of the cap as I was turning it, and it gave it a nice big scratch in there. But I was able to uh, cover it up with some Molotol chrome. But overall, this is the dashboard, how it's going to look, and it's looking pretty good. Only one issue is, I believe this light blue was a trim clad spray color. kind of ran a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. The issue is where I've scraped the paint there's still going to be a little bit of a white trace in there because I don't think I have a blue that matches this. So we're going to have to see what I can come up with. Here's the grill for our 1970 Pontiac Trans Am. And I had a real tough time trying to fit it into that body panel. And what I had to do was take my file and alter the corner shapes of this to try to get it away from the sides at this point. And I scraped the paint off here, or the plating, because I thought that's where it was going to contact, and then I found out that it doesn't actually glue along here and in the center like I thought. 
it seems to want to glue on this edge and of course the top edge and by fiddling around with this I uh, ended up wiping off the black paint that I put on there with my fingers but I'll uh, touch that up once I get it in the car so when you're trying to install this try to file this down a little bit closer to the headlight and then don't scrape in here I'm gonna have to cover this with my Molotol pen and scraping the center is sort of useless so on the actual body panel let's see if I can back this up a bit I don't think I can get this in the camera too well okay here we go so I scraped here along this edge on the inside being careful not to hit the paint on the outside and I did the same turning it over on the bottom what I'm going to try to do is position this grill back here and I don't know if I should have glued that front end on back in 93 I did try to get a little bit of it off but then I realized that I was gonna scrape that white paint in the like try to cut it off a little bit through here and because this is yellowed if I put new white paint on the top it's gonna be white bright white anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now I've got plastic to plastic contact but instead of the well, I'm going to put a bit of the uh, regular testers glue up at the top, but along the bottom edge, I'm going to put a little bead of crazy glue, being very careful. And then once this is in, I will push from the center where my finger is here, put my thumb here on the center brace, and just push on here until that crazy glue kicks in and I can let go. And then the testers glue will, you know, over a longer period of time, melt in at the top but this is just using the um, crazy glue is just to give it that strength that it needs so that the other glue can take its time and set up but once this is set I can release my thumb and that front grill and everything should be able to get the headlights more or less where they need to be but I've even seen on the front of the box it shows a gap in between that front marker light I think it's on this side but anyway you can visibly see it actually it could be this side you can visibly see it on the box art so even monogram had an issue trying to fit their own grill in the opening now that we've got the interior tub assembled and finished we're gonna have to take a look at the glass one thing that this glass has are two sun visors and this frosted area right in here now the thing about the frosted area is that it has to be painted black and that is to cover up something which I'll show you next. Here I have the Trans Am body hood and interior and I'm just holding the interior in because otherwise it's just going to fall out of place. But what you notice here is this gigantic gap between the closed hood and the dashboard. Now the glass has that frosted area and if we just temporarily hold it in place you can see that the frosted area would cover up that gap however because this is clear you'll still be able to see inside behind the dashboard and we don't really want that so we're going to have to paint that frosted area black when it comes to the installation of the glass you can see that there's this tiny little peg that sticks up right behind here this peg does not go into that hole that hole is for the rear view mirror but you'll notice that the sun visors are notched in the center right there and that little notch in the center is the rest for the windshield or for a place for the windshield to rest on is what I'm trying to say and then you can see that frosted area now that frosted area comes up pretty high into there so let's just take a look at what this frosted area looks like when we have the interior reinstalled and now here's our glass with the interior and up to our body and you can see that the frosted section of the window now comes underneath the hood and that is just how it's supposed to look on a real GM now outside I have a 72 cutlass so I'll just take the camera out there and quickly show you what it looks like in my cutlass so here's the front windshield of my cutlass and you can see that the glass comes down like this 
And then it does have a chrome strip here instead of just being painted black. But the principle is the same, that the glass actually comes down underneath here. And it's just sitting above where those screws are to mount this chrome piece. But it's all the same in theory going up there as the Pontiac. So we need to address painting this portion on our Pontiac glass. Now the question is, how are we going to paint this frosted area? Well, one way to do it is to get your flat black paint and freehand it in. But then the trouble with that is your hand can wobble. And because the clear is an important piece of the kit, and if you go up or whatever, you're going to have to end up stripping that paint off of there. And that's never any fun. Or the other way is to use some frog tape and our compass. Now before we put down any frog tape on this clear plastic part, we need to clean it. And one thing I can recommend is using a little soap and water and one of these nice microfiber cloths that you can get at any optometrist. These things are excellent in removing minor grease or dirt or whatever. And they are excellent. They clean my glasses and work really well. So here I've just cleaned the glass and I've wiped it down with my polishing cloth. So I'll just put this down like this. Now we need to know how far down this frosted piece is. So what I've done is I've taken my compass and I've adjusted the points so that the metal one is now going to trail the bottom edge and the pencil part is going to line up with the top of that frosted bit or the bottom of the frosted bit, however you want to look at this. And so when I put the tape on the top of this, I can then go along the edge and make a line. Now where it curves up here, I won't be able to, but because this line is coming across, I can take another pencil and just guesstimate the curve up to here on our tape and mark it. Now the pencil in the compass was a little bit light, but here is our line right there. And then all we need to do is cut it out with our knife and then remove the bottom portion. We want to keep this top part as our mask because I'm going to brush paint that once the tape is off. Just along there. And that's the part I need to cover. Now, if you are going to airbrush this, I would recommend taking the tape and covering all the way up here and then flipping it over and covering this whole side because otherwise you're going to have this part painted black and a nice little strip right in there that's clear. And we don't want that. Here's our windshield with the masking tape cut to the right shape. And then I'm burnishing it down with this burnishing tool. This is something my dad made. He took a metal rod and then heated the end with a blowtorch and hammered it. Then after he hammered it, he filed it all up and then polished this with a uh, polishing wheel on the drill press. Made this nice, smooth, reflective edge. And that's what it's all designed for. So burnishing down the tape will give it a tighter seal. You could also use a spoon, a metal spoon, in order to make that work. So now I can get my flat black paint on this brush and just carefully go in here and then peel the masking tape off. And when you peel the masking tape off, you don't want to rip straight up. You want to roll it at an angle so that it will back away from the paint edge and not cut it. Here's our piece of glass with the black stripe painted on the bottom. And just turning this over, you can see how well the burnishing did because you can't see any paint that ran underneath that tape line. You can see where it is though, because it is a little bit darker in that area. So now what I need to do is just flip this little piece of tape outward. Hopefully I can get this. Okay, now I'm gonna use these tweezers here. I don't really like them as much because they don't want to grip perfectly. Okay, now this is what I mean. So you see I'm curling the tape back, not lifting straight up, curling it. Curl it back and away from the paint. 
I'm getting over my thumb here. Okay. There, how's that? Now I still need that paint to dry. It will go into flat black mode eventually. Now maybe you're thinking, well, why did you paint it on the inside? Maybe it should have been here on the outside. Now if you wanted to do that, I would just suggest doing the same thing with the compass and all that. But uh, mask the front side of the window and then go across with the compass, draw your line, and cut it from the front side. Then you can paint the bottom with the flat black. But here I think it's okay because you've got the transparency of the glass going through here, which gives it a high gloss kind of look. Now unfortunately I can't just put this in the car right now because this is still wet and that would probably smudge it all over the window, but I'll let this thing dry outside. I will also paint the sun visors so that they can dry. And I'll put this, yeah, outside in the Oldsmobile I just showed you. It makes a perfect drying booth while it's waiting for its restoration. Here's our windshield just stuck onto a piece of tape to hold it. And you can see that we've got our black painted on as well as the blue sun visors and a bit of Molotol chrome just on those little pins for the sun visors. And that, of course, are the hinges for the sun visors so that you can fold them up and down. So I'm just going to put this out in the Oldsmobile, let it dry in the sun in a sheltered, dust-free area. And then I can install it in the Firebird. Here we have the rear window, and you can see just how close this is sitting in the car. It's very, very close to the edge of the actual window frame. And if I take this window away, you can see that white line that's going around in the blue. Now this is the area that I have to remove the paint from in order to glue the window down. And like I said, it is so close in there. Took the back of my hobby knife and just scraped around the edge of that window. And that's what I got. So now I'll just clear that out and glue the window down. Back to the front glass, I scraped off the paint behind the cowl here, as well as traced out where the visors are going to touch the inside of the body and removed the paint just in that area so that when I glue the glass in it doesn't affect the dark blue headliner. Here's the interior after the glass is glued in and I painted this area in here because it looked really rough and when I turned the model over you could see inside there. The other thing I had to do was paint the back of the dashboard with the flat black again for the same reasons is that when you had the model together just or when I had it together handheld I could see right through where the hood goes in into that entire back of the dashboard so again very important to uh, paint that the other thing I'm noticing as I just test fit this together is that these little uh, collars here are actually up above the floor pan and in the instructions it does have pins on the bottom of the interior tub but here I have none so I'm thinking if I just clip those off and then scrape a little bit of paint here and here and then this bottom edge that I'd have a nice platform to glue the interior down to and hopefully it allows the undercarriage to go up into the body. Now our Trans Am is starting to come together under the engine bay and I've painted the brake master cylinder and boosters as well as hand letter this Delco lettering on top of the battery. I'm not sure if these are actually painted this color, the wires, probably not. But just painting them black or leaving them black would make them disappear and not stand out at all. So I added in a little bit of red and yellow that I saw in a muscle car magazine on a 66 Pontiac. At any rate, this is what we've got. Underneath the car, I noticed that the gas tank was still painted flat black. So I ended up painting it with Tester's Steel and now it looks a lot better. And I was correct, cutting off those two little pins that were sitting up on the chassis underneath, that actually made everything sit together nicely. So remember to cut those pins off on this one if you don't have the little pegs and the pins on the interior. Remember earlier I was having a problem with the distributor and the air cleaner hitting it? Well, what I discovered is that I had to drill the holes out not because Monogram made a mistake, 
but because I had glued this before and the holes here and here for the distributor and the air cleaner were filled with old glue. So it wasn't allowing the air cleaner to get back down in the hole or to allow the distributor to fall down far enough. But now I've drilled them out. And there we go. We've got the air cleaner bottom sitting on top of the distributor without actually touching the distributor. And then when I clean that out a bit for a glue to glue contact, there is the nice blue hood scoop. Now I've added some chrome to the car, like on the side marker lights and that sort of thing. The door handles, as well as got that front end all together and the hood on with the hood scoop. Now all I got to do is just put the tail feathers on our bird and we should all be ready to go. Remember earlier in the video I was wondering what this little piece was that was sitting right here in the window? I figured out what it was by looking at pictures of the side profile of the car. And Monogram has ended up missing something on here. There's supposed to be a piece of window molding that goes up along here. And then this sunken in bit is where the molding comes down. And then there's supposed to be chrome going across here. So to completely encase that window with a perimeter frame. That's what this piece is. So if you get some of the evergreen styrene thin rod, you can actually put that piece back up here with it. This is your drip rail that would be up there. And uh, then you could paint that with the chrome and get it all together. Now, unfortunately, I've already painted my model, so that bit of trim would be something you'd want to do before you paint your model. So I think in this case, I'm just going to leave it the way it is, even though I know I should paint the chrome in here, but I think it's too late for that. The other thing I think I'll do is, if you look at the rear bumper, there is a seam liner right there on the edge. And that is because the way they molded this, they had to make the little top of the back of the bumper in the top part of the mold with the rest of the bumper being in the bottom part. So I think I can file that down, clean it all off, and then repaint the bumper using the Molotol paint pen. So far so good with the Trans Am, but I feel like something's missing off the tires. So I have these red circles from a 1967 Ravel Corvette that I'm going to see if I can get on here. Well, no such luck on those. As soon as I put them in the water and uh, tried to take them off the paper, they just busted into a million pieces. So there goes that idea. And here we have our finished 1970 Pontiac Trans Am. And you can see just how nicely this turned out. Check out that side view profile. And then we turn her into the back and I've got those tail lights. They're all lit up here. Well, not really lit up, but they do have the chrome in behind them and the Trans Am license plate going on there. You can see the exhaust pipes down below and there's our retouched chrome bumper and the side marker lights, what I was thinking of before, just did not get the word in time. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's looking good. You can see the amber uh, turn signals off the side as well as when we get back up to the front here. And here's our car with the hood up and you can see all the little bits that I painted in underneath here for the hood mat. Again, really a cool kit. And if I just lift the camera up, you can see the whole hood there, plus my light in the backdrop. But yeah, again, it's not that bad of a model. Now, I don't think the hood would actually flip this high or this vertical because they like, look at this. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it would be more oop, down there somewhere, sort of like that angle. <laughs> but at any rate, well, there is the model and I hope you like this video. So now I'll just take a couple of still photographs and we'll see how it looks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that build of the Monogram 1970 Pontiac Trans Am. And remember, if there's something on your model kit shelf that needs to be done, 
why not do it on a Fridays and you too can have your own Finish It Friday model kit. What are you working on right now? Please let us know down in the comment section below. And if you're looking for great model kits, don't forget to visit our web store www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can order a fresh new model kit. And until next time everybody, happy model building and we'll see you next Friday.